If you have seen this CN, CVA and other abbreviations around when using Tailwind and are confused about their meaning or how to use them, I will go over them and first start with the simplest example, which is CLSX. It is an utility library and it provides a function that helps us construct class names conditionally and it's useful especially when you have more than one conditions. Let's start with a simple example where you have a component that contains a text and you want to change the color of the text based on the prop. So I will create a next step with Tailwind to demonstrate this example. If you are new to Next.js, you can watch my tutorial where I build a portfolio website. But if you're looking for something more advanced, you can check out the one where we build an AI form generator. And now let's run this application that we just created. Let's say we have a text and we're going to add a color on it. So by default, it's going to have a blue color, but let's say there's some uh, variable that's coming in. We'll name it color. And if it's red, then we want to show red colors. Uh, now it's red if you wanted to have a button. So what we have here is ternary operator that determines that has two conditions. If color is red, then it displays red, if not blue. What if we had a third color, which is green? So then what we would do is we would add like another option here. So we would add another condition here. So if this stands true, then this come. And if we do change the color, text will be green here. So if you have more conditions, this would become harder to read in this way. You have to keep creating more conditional statements. So to map this uh, colors with your class names in an easier way, you can create an object and let's name this color classes. So now if we remove all this and instead call the color classes, we're going to get Say we have other conditions, for example, the border, we can easily combine these class names using CLCX. And let's install that npm install. Once that's done, I am going to import it at the top. And I mentioned border. So let's do border equals to may be true. So CLCX takes in um, a multiple different kinds of, it can take in an object. You can also take in an array and the return statement is always a string because that's what we pass to the class name here, right? Um, so then we can have a condition where if border is true, we can say and uh, something like just add a border. So it shows like a white border here. If you guys um, can see, I'm going to add like a color. And then it, if it's false, it removes the border. And we can even define uh, as another element here, default classes that would always show up. For example, let's add some padding. Um, so no matter what the condition, this would be here and we can see that it added some padding. Okay. So now we have a logic in place for combining classes, but what happens if we have classes coming in from props, let's say you want to make the UI components customizable. So we let users pass class name as a prop and one of them has the same attributes as we have already defined, which one does take the precedence. For example, uh, here we have a, a button uh, that has border, border color is black and we also take in props that class name. So if we were to take in this, uh, import this button here, and instead of merging top, I'm going to do border red. So I do want to override the default color. You can see that it is still a uh, black. And if we go, even though it added this uh, 
class name, right? So if we go look at the HTML, we can see that both of these classes are present um, and we don't necessarily know which one is going to um, actually be used when creating this like CSS. And even if we were to use uh, CLCX to combine the classes, it would just combine it, right? It would, we can define what's the priority, what's not. That's where we need Tailwind Merge. So if we were to import Tailwind Merge here and call the function, we can do like this and whatever comes the last that would have like a higher priority. Uh, I guess we need to install that as well. It's not included in Tailwind. Okay. And if we go here now, we can see that we don't have the border black anymore because Tailwind merge function saw the conflicting classes and picked the one that had higher priority. So that would be border red. And if I do 500 following the Tailwind color class name convention, we're also going to actually see the red color on the screen. And you can do the correct merge and combining classes together with CLCX and Tailwind merge, but so that you don't have to call both functions together every single time. That's where CN came from. And it's basically a combination of the two. And the first time I personally saw it was when I was using Shatsi and UI library and there's like this definition in the utils. I noticed it and I then went to see what it actually does because it looked very similar to me as CLSX. So it basically calls uh, Tailwind merge first and then combining classes. Um, and this function is exported. So if we want to do the same, we can use that. But yeah, Shatsian UI library, I use it in a few of my projects. And if you guys want like a separate tutorial for that, let me know in the comments. We don't have TypeScript in this project, so I'm going to remove that type definitions. And we can just call this one, but we first need to import that. Okay. So yeah, it would do the correct combining as well as uh, determining priority and same thing for here. If you want a better way to manage context, like variant sizes and borders for your components, that brings us to the next utility library that's class variance authority, in short CVA. It does also provide like a type safe way of defining the props you're passing to your components. And when I say context, uh, what I mean by that is, uh, for example, in our button, we can has a size that could be like small, large, or uh, medium. There's like three definitions and this three would include, if it's a small, it would include a different text sizes, different paddings, margins. Then we have like different sets of classes in a large or medium. So it's like categorizing this class names and boiling down into a context, which is size in this case. And let's take a look at this example for the button. So after you install this class variance authority, you can import it at the top. And first we pass it an array of all the defaults that we want to add. Um, so for the button, we had this border black. I moved it over here. After that, we have variants and we define first one. The type is intent. We have two primary and secondary followed by sizes. Uh, these are compound variants are where we have all three variants, all the variants defined. So intent would be primary. Then we have a size medium and class 
um, uppercase. Uh, and by default, if let's say user doesn't pass any variance, we can say, we can define what the default ones should look like. So if I go here right now, and then finally we take this uh, button variance definitions and pass it to our class name of component. So if I remove uh, this completely and pass like an empty object, I can also do that and it would uh, take by default whatever is defined here. But if I go back and try to utilize the variant or size coming from the props, you can see that I have defined a uh, class uh, size small so it's small but it also has like border red 500 that gets overridden so if i want to change the size it would be pretty simple we'll do medium and um that's very convenient you can different define your variants however um you like it doesn't have to be primary or secondary um, same thing for the sizes, you can add as many sizes as you want. And you can also even combine, uh, like inside here, use other utility functions. Like for example, I have CN here, where for some variants, I have reusable class names that I didn't want to define over and over again. So I uh, created like a, a, the list of them and saved it in new classes. And then after that, I add the classes that are unique um, to this specific each one of the variants um so yeah that's cool and um yeah this class names or functions also help you manage your tailwind classes which sometimes can get very large uh, in a better way and reuse them make your also components easily customizable so others when they're using it they can customize it and i'll see you in the next one thank you for watching